Hello, I'm Alyssa Ravenwood. I'm the owner of Ravenwood Masks, and those are my hands you're seeing. I'm going to be sculpting a daring leather mask for you. And what you see me doing now is smoothing the edges of the leather. The leather is hand cut. The tool I'm using to smooth the edges is called a bone folder. They used to be made out of bone, but this one's made out of plastic, and it's from Tandy Leather Company. The reason to seal the edges like this is it creates... <laughs> That's my dog CK growling at a raccoon in the background there. It seals the edges and it also bevels them. So it protects the mask from water getting in, like sweat or rain, and it gives a nice smooth edge to the mask. The mask is made out of vegetable tanned leather, and this leather reacts with water. So when you get it damp, you can actually sculpt it and it becomes very pliable. The tool you see me using now is actually a child's maraca that I found in a parking lot. Um, and the handle has broken, so I taped it up with some duct tape there. The cushion underneath is something I found at um, either Michael's or Joanne's Fabrics in the jewelry section. It's a little sandbag with suede over it. Um, you can get bigger ones, but this one's just fine for, for doing most things. This is a very thin mask, so I'm using the smaller edge of the maraca to give the leather kind of a curve to it. Gives it some shape, some a quality that I think other masks that aren't sculpted like this have. Um, but the other thing it does is it gives it some resilience. When the leather has a, a arch shape to it, it holds its shape better. What I'm using right now is called a ball tool. And this is from Tandy Leather Company. And this is a technique that I learned from my mentor, Larry Wood, who's the owner at Fantasy Guild Studios. And this is more of what I was just saying about creating some arches in the mask gives you strength. So that if you didn't do this, the mask would be kind of floppy and shapeless. So now I'm using my fingers to pinch that arch tighter. You can see up in the corner there is a life cast of an actor that I made a long time ago. The forehead and chin is cut off because this was a life cast I was using for a neoprene mask mold. And with a neoprene mold, the molds are quite heavy. So you want to reduce the weight as much as possible and this is going to be a half mask which is a mask that just covers the eyes and the nose maybe the upper lip so I didn't need the top of the head and the chin. You'll notice that my fingernails are pretty short um, that's just my personal taste but also I have found in my leather sculpting classes when my students have long fingernails they mark up the leather something terrible and it's really hard it can be done um, but it's really hard not to mark up the leather with your fingernails when they're long this little ridge above the nose and above the eyebrows has kind of become a, a signature look for me it is structural um, makes the mask stronger but I also think it gives the mask some character um, especially with the superhero masks gives it more of an intense glare Now I'm using a lighter to burn off any little feathery edges that didn't get smoothed down during sculpting. I also did this before, which you didn't see on the video, before I started sculpting. And there it is, a sculpted leather mask. This mask will dry overnight, and then I'll paint it. Thanks so much for watching, it's been fun. 
and I'll see you again next time. Bye.